Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. I want to go ahead and discuss and talk about this movie with you all real quick. Now, let me go ahead and start off by saying, yes, I am totally biased because these two actors, I think, did a superb job and I actually enjoy watching this film over and over and over again. I do not get tired of it. I love the scenery. I think Mickey Rourke is amazing. Uh, Kim Bassinger uh, actually did really well for this role. Um, honestly, I just love this film. And I honestly can watch it a million times over again. Now, let me go ahead and get into my movie review. And we'll get into the details. Nine and a Half Weeks, released in 1986. I gave this film a rating of 10. I've seen it over four times, but here are the dates in which I actually decided to write a review for you guys. So I saw it in 2006, 2007, 2009, 2012, 2015. I'm pretty sure I've seen it in between those dates and before and after. Okay, so first time I reviewed it, uh, when I read the reviews after finishing Nine and a Half Weeks, in a stunned amazement, I am dismayed by the low opinions of this vastly underrated and misunderstood motion picture. It's an absolute classic and the most sexual I've ever seen. Starting with Kim Bassinger, she has never acted this one well her entire career. Her characterization of the confused Elizabeth is dead on because she plays the innocent, curious seeker who can't see how psychologically damaging the aftermath will be. Mickey Rourke is practically practically steals the film in every scene he appears in. John's mysteriousness makes his co character a compelling piece of work, forcing the relationship between the two to suffer from his dangerous psychological game. As a result, the buildup of tension throughout mind games brings a great deal of strain for Elizabeth, who becomes confused in the direction of her relationship with him, which leads to a tragic and unforgettable chilling ending. Although the passion and the chemistry between them easily melts a bowl of ice cream within seconds. What makes Ten and a Half Weeks great is how much more meaningful and powerful a film than uh, powerful a film than Tango and Last Paris is. Marlon Brando has admitted that he had neither an idea what it was all about nor a clue what he was doing in it, but nine and a half weeks, everybody feels a purpose and becomes prepared for the psychological sexual journey of feelings. As a sexually and wild Exhilarating as nine and a half weeks is, its greatest assets of the film are the notion of less is more, the control of subtlety, the vivid cinematography, the limitations of getting to know each other, and the depth of the mysterious within John. Mika Work's character as paradoxically sexy figure is the most singular importance of the film's success. All in all, nine and a half weeks is the number one erotic picture ever made. Nine and a half weeks. Features two outstanding performances from Mickey Rourke and Kim Bassinger. The master masterpiece from a psychological standpoint brings forth a profound misunderstanding of the audience of how a lustful fling works based on impulse and fear. It's because most have never experienced it. The movie depicts neither mind nor body control, but rather explores how a couple goes far enough to the point that sets in a confusion of feelings. Nine and a Half Weeks director Adrian Lin does a masterful job, too masterful that he would try to fail to recapture it in many of his later films. I have a feeling that Zalaman King, many have influenced him in how the scenes should be shot. Playing as mysterious John Mickey Rourke has the brand of quality about him in the end of The Fear of Losing Elizabeth. He suddenly becomes vulnerably real. At the same time, her vulnerability shows that she is tired of the games, which makes her to walk out the door and out of his life forever. Sad. What sets the film apart from the soft pornos and the trashy romantic films is that the sex scenes are not primarily money shots, rather it's a subtlety of feelings and emotions. That's why the ending says it all at nine and a half weeks is all about. All in all, to understand why Mickey Rourke is one of the best actors ever to emerge during the 80s is to see nine and a half weeks. Is there a more puzzling, mysterious character than John? When I think of John's desperate attempt to win back Elizabeth's feelings in a final few minutes as his vulnerability is rawly exposed, it demonstrates the brilliance of nine and a half weeks. 
The psychological games, the exhilarating sense of danger, that cascade of tests, the manipulation, the subtle shaping of obedience, the sex without love, the confusion of feelings, a spell doom in the relationship between John and Elizabeth. Mika Rourke is responsible for pushing Kim Bastinger to the very limits that she has never done better work ever since. All in all, Nine and a Half Weeks is a cinematic masterpiece of unbridled romance, sex, and feelings, only to be undone by a complicated series of basic human needs. Nine and a Half Weeks still holds up. Alright, so those are all of my reviews. Honestly, though, if you had to take out the the saucy scenes and the, you know, the body aesthetics, I think the film, aside from the relationship, is fantastic because you get to see New York, the scenery, the artwork. Uh, honestly, you can you actually feel like you're almost in New York. So I think the scene plays a big role as well because you're kind of like you can easily get lost in New York and all of its grandeur so the fact even just the fact that these two characters found each other in such a busy location uh, is also an indicator of how much um, how much chemistry they had together so overall fantastic film to watch every scene is very interesting you will not get bored. You will want to watch this over and over again. Thank you so much for listening to my review. Talk to you later. See you soon. Subscribe. Check out my playlists.